MX join has some advanced commands for working with the curve based joins that we've created. So I'm going to start by taking a look at this fillet weld I defined earlier. And what I want is the same thing on the opposite side here. And the easiest way to generate that would be by simply mirroring it across this plane here. So what I'll do is I'll go to the transform join utility. There is an option to just translate along the coordinate system. We had the same thing for point joins. But what I want to use here is the mirror command. So we'll go ahead and select our fillet, specify the plane. I'll select this one here. We get a quick preview of where that's going to go. I am going to keep that associative. Um, so I want it completely based on the changes that I make over here. So we'll go ahead and create that in associative fashion. So you can see here, we've got something that um, you know looks identical to what we had on the opposite side. Now I'm going to take that and go ahead and create a weld symbol for that. So we'll use the join weld symbol command. I'm going to select this thing here. We'll go ahead and generate that. And you can see here, we've got a weld symbol generated. Move that over a little bit where we can see it a little bit easier. You know, it covers the length of it. It tells us what the throat thickness is, what the finish is. Now, what's cool about this is I can actually go back to the original and modify it. So let me make a couple of changes here. Maybe I want to make that fill, fill it just a little bit smaller. So I'm going to change the throat thickness to be uh, three. Um, we're going to change that to a flush, and instead of grinding, we're going to change our finish type to machining. And again, that change is made on the original one, not the transformed one. So you'll notice that after I do that, the shape changes. We've lost the uh, convex profile on it. Um, you can see we, the symbol is now updated to indicate that it's machined. It's got the new throat thickness, and it also has the uh, indication that that's going to be flush. Um, now, similarly, let's go to where we have our fillet weld that's backed up with a bevel. We can do the same thing there, and um, I'll go ahead and pre-select my two joins, and uh, we'll run the transform join command, and uh, we'll do basically the same thing. We'll specify our mirror plane, and um, but this time I'm going to make them non-associative. So again, we'll get a quick preview. When we click OK, it's going to rediscover the appropriate faces and create those things. So now those have been generated. But in this case, we have something that we want to actually maybe change a little bit on the opposite side because we know something about the forces that are going to be coming in. So this allows me to take the fillet weld that was created in a mirrored fashion, and because it's not associative, I can make some small change to that. So I can increase the throat thickness and make that one a little bit different. Now another thing I can do here is I can turn those two, or even these four, into um, a compound weld. So what I'll do is I'll go in here and say, OK, we'll put the arrow on the right. So we'll say that these two are going to be on the arrow side. And then on the other side, we'll have these other two. So that creates the compound join weld. And then from there, we'll go back to the weld symbol command, select this one. Here you can see we've got a weld symbol that covers both the arrow side and the opposite side. You can see there's a slight different on, difference on the fillet weld on the left versus the right. And uh, you know we get an accurate symbol for that. So that's properly defined. Now the last one of the advanced utilities we can take a look at is edge prep. So this particular plate here is going to have to be machined to allow for that fillet to go there. Um, excuse me, for the, for the bevel weld. And um, as we mentioned before, in this case, my bevel goes along the entire length. Um, but we do have an option here. So if I were to have something like a skip weld, where I had broken that into sections, or if I had shortened it a little bit, we still may want to have the edges prepared along the entire length. But that's one of the options that we have here. I'm going to go ahead and make it go the entire length. So what we'll do is we'll go to the edge preparation utility. We'll select our two bevel welds here. Create that. 
And now what we can do is go take a look at that plate there. And you can see now it contains those two edge prep features so that this part could be machined to in the way that it needs to be for um, creating the welds that you want.